a story that we've referenced probably too many times on this channel not to actually cover directly. We're finally here. The Monkey's Paw by WWJ Cops. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll, Turbo. You have re referenced a million times. Crypto had never read this story before, I don't think. <laughs> <gasps> well, okay, hang on. Let's put it this way. Even if, even, like for, for viewers out there, even if you have never read this story, you know the story. You know right? the story. Agree. You, you yes. know the story of trying to, I'm going to say, tempt fate, to change fate, to take a shortcut to happiness, right? And wrap that up with the fairy tale three, you know, from the magic lamp, sort of like, a, you know, Aladdin Arabian Tales type thing. You, you, you get the gist of it, right? And, and I guess that's a good place to start. Why, why three wishes? Like, what's with the number three? And while it's a very important number for fairy tales, tell me why you think there's always three. Religion. It always comes back to religion and faith. And I think that's the power of this story is if you have faith, then maybe it will happen. Or if you lack faith, maybe it won't happen. Okay. I, I took it a totally different way that I don't, you know, not trying to discredit or anything, but he, here's my view on it. And I guess this is kind of bad because I took it so practical. You have with three, you have first a chance to make a mistake. Uh huh. Right. And you don't know why the mistake happened. You just know, hey, this didn't turn out the way I wanted. Right. And, and that happens in life. Right. Oh, my God, I threw this party without my parents here and it got out of control and we destroyed half the house. Right. Then you make a second wish. Right. Like where you try to fix the first one and you realize by trying to do another quick cleanup, like, oh, I'll just hire people to come in. And then, oh, no, they stole stuff in my house. I'm, I'm making this up on the fly. Right. But it's that idea of trying to reverse it with a shortcut, like the first shortcut didn't work. So obviously a second shortcut should fix it. And then you start to realize the pattern because it takes two to make a pattern. Right. Like mm -hmm. the smallest pattern possible of shortcuts don't work. And that's when the third one can set it right of just like, let's go back and let let the natural order of things work themselves out like that. That's why I kind of like the three, because the first two can be glorious, can show you that that they're wrong in a twisted way. And it gives you a chance to set things right, which is just to let things happen naturally. So you didn't think of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Let's go through our process here, right? So we, <laughs> we we start out on a dark and stormy night, much like how I'm recording right here. So if you hear thunder or hail hitting my house, you'll know that I'm living the story right now, right? Very poetic. <laughs> the family of, oh gosh, three. There's that number again, the whites. Yeah, and three. <laughs> <laughs> Who saw that coming? And, and they're sitting there playing chess. The father and the son are at least, right? And then that's when the sergeant major, sergeant general, I don't remember what it was, Morris comes in and he's like, oh, uh, one of them's like, what about that paw? What what paw? Like, oh, this, this magical monkey paw that I just so happened to have on me? Well, yes. And he tells the story basically of how this thing is cursed and how it can grant three wishes. If you just hold it in your right hand, the, the wishes come true to, to speed things up, right? And first of all, there, there's a lot happening in this beginning, right? You have the introduction introduction of magic, of, of belief, as opposed to practicality, I guess, to your point. You have uh, when, when you know, Mr. White gets the, the monkey's paw and makes his first wish, it wiggles and he drops it almost like a, a snake, right? So there's, oh, yeah, you're right. There is that uh, Adam and Eve uh, Satan temptation mm -hmm. where you find the out temptation. that. temptation. Yeah, yep. like, oh, great, I'll have all this knowledge, but oh, man, I got to suffer for eternity and I have mortality and die now? Oh, this this plan <laughs> was awful, right? <laughs> so yeah, there's there's absolutely that angle. I, I don't want to discredit that angle. Um, but, you know, th there's just a lot going on in this story. Like, for, for one thing, while I love this story and will always reference it and think it's, you know, one of the greatest stories of all time, in my opinion, I still kind of wonder, like, what if you switch their names like, what if Mr. White the, the gen, was the general and he was the first one to have the paw, right, in the story at least? I like that because they're playing chess and White always goes first in chess, right? Mm. And then if the family of three had been the Morrises, well, they were always wishing for more, right, with this paw when they thought they had everything. And I, I kind of like that plan words there. 
But I guess let's start with the father, right? He had everything. I don't even know what to wish on, right? Like the fact that he didn't need to tempt fate or speed things up or change anything because he was freaking happy, which how often does that happen in a story? He still chooses to try to speed things up. Like I'll wish for 200 pounds so that I can clear the mortgage, right? Like, hmm. I think that's where it comes into another level of kind of that religious angle that I felt from this story was greed. It, it always seems to double down on you when you pick one of the seven deadly sins and he, Mr. White's picking greed. He didn't need it. His life was great. Everything was taken care of. His son was successful. His wife is happy. Everything's wonderful. But then he went not only to get more and not saying I, I'm not saying that necessarily if you want more, that's being greedy, but wanting more through easy means seems to be a greedy, evil, quote, nature. Mm. Well, OK, I definitely see that angle. Right. But let's. Let's talk about fate for a second, right? Because there's this quote kind of like to the backstory of like, why, why do we even want this? He wanted to show that fate ruled people's lives and that those who interfered with it did so to their sorrow. He put a spell on it so that the three separate men could each have three wishes from it, right? And this is talking about the, the creation of the monkey paw. So again, only three people can have this curse and learn the lesson, right? And, and I guess, gosh, you're going to make me start making this religious argument, and I don't want to, but here I am now. <laughs> I, I guess it, when you look at the Bible, it's, it's kind of a person teaches lessons to others, right? If you look at the, the four main Gospels, they're basically the biographies of Jesus, right? And he's teaching others how to live the quote unquote, you know, Christian life essentially. And so in the same way, the story, I guess this, this Pharaoh or whatever, he, he's going to have three disciples that are going to teach the lesson of greed and shortcuts to others. And I hate that you're making me make this argument, but that's the reality <laughs> is that they are kind of becoming these disciples of be careful what you wish for. Let me, let me help you out though. What if it was all just a coincidence. I mean, okay. that, that's, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's the big counter argument of yeah. when the 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 general or, or Mr. Herbert or whoever shows up of what if it's just a coincidence? Because, I mean, you see the monkey paw jiggle, but is it a trick of the mind? I, I mean, we've all had that happen in life before where you think you see something out of the corner of your eye, but your mind is playing tricks on you. So it could be, mm. I mean, and, and it brings up the point of, why a monkey's paw? Where does that come from? Why isn't it a cat's paw? Why isn't it a rabbit's foot? I mean, why does it have to be that? So, I mean, I think there are many choices that you could make of how to interpret this story without it being a religious view. That's actually a really good point. <laughs> Questions, right? Like when is something fate versus when is something coincidence? And you got to start asking those questions, right? When when Mr. Morris comes over and he throws it in the fireplace, right? Like that's not a normal thing of like, hey, this really cool magical artifact and then discarding it at a friend's <laughs> fireplace. Like there's a lot safer ways to do this than that. But then also the fact that he reveals like, oh yeah, by the way, the last owner, his last wish was for death. And you're just like, uh, uh, is, is nobody going to follow up on that one? Like, no, yeah. nobody wants to know why? Uh, like, <laughs> question. <laughs> like, th there's a yeah. lot of things that ought to have been questioned. And maybe, just maybe, you can come to rational discussions of coincidence as opposed to fate, right? Like, are we in control of fate? Like, is are sometimes things, bad luck, are just coincidences? And how many times by tempting fate or by tempting to do things that you're not supposed to, does it actually cause harm, right? And, and that's a very tricky question. So I guess it comes to the question is, the father asked for the 200 pounds, a monetary value, and then what happens? His son dies. Mm -hmm. Ugh, gar gut wrenching, right? Like mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. lost your only child for 200 pounds. Now, a lot of money back then, measly today, but Regardless, you gave up your flesh and blood 
for a material possession. Right. Well, I, I, arguably, at any point in time, there is no value to give up a human life. life. Like, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Like, that might sound kind of cheesy, but it, if you're not there in life to, like, really believe that, then d- just keep going in life. Trust me. You'll get there one yeah. day. <laughs> I don't even have kids. Most people know that to watch the channel. I still get it. <laughs> At mm-hmm. some point when you become an old man, you will get it too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or an old person. Well, it, <laughs> think about all those people that win the lottery. Oh, man. If I just had, you know, a hundred million dollars, I, I, I would just be so happy. But that brings up the Pyrrhic victory of, of when is when is greed too much and, when, and what really is happiness because what happens to most lottery winners? Yeah, they be end up broke and miserable. Yeah, that greed word again. Mm-hmm. Oh, you you would bring that up, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh? But okay, you win the lottery, you get a hundred million dollars, right? People start chasing you. You find out people are in your family that you never knew. You find out someone's jumping in front of your car and claim that you hit them so that way they could see you, right? Like people are coming for your money. This is way worse. Kind of like the, uh, it's one of my favorite movies, I'm sorry, but uh, Bedazzled with Brendan Fraser. <laughs> you've, got, yes. you've got the promise of something, and, and honestly, a good story in terms of like Faust and stuff. You've got a promise of something, and then it gets twisted, right? How do you undo the lottery? How do you undo greed, in a sense? And, is it, and, and, and usually you're like, okay, let me buy off these things, right? And that's that's the second problem. By trying to use that money and try to use that earnings, I'll I'll pay my way out of it. The main character almost always ends up worse, right? And the wife's wish in this story is I wish we had our son back. And then all of a sudden, it's like a zombie movie with like the knocking at the door, like Pet Mm. cemetery style. And you're like, oh my gosh, what have we done, right? By trying to take a shortcut again the second time you start to realize how shortcuts are problems and that's what happens with those people with the money problems right they're trying to throw more and more money at solving these pain points and problems and it just causes more and more problems when people realize that you have money like the the people just keep popping up at the door and instead of saying you know when you're poor people ask me for a tip of like five ten bucks at a restaurant when you're rich they're like okay i'll do it for you as your lawyer but it's going to cost you eight percent it's going to cost you ten percent and that money whittles away a lot faster and and it's not only that that they double down, it's they double down using the sin. So they mm. wish this wish, and then they take the 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 tainted money, or they take the monkey's paw to try to undo it. And that's I think the crux of the story is that two wrongs don't make a right. That that you're not going to get out of that way. That there there must be some other avenue in order to to fix this situation. And they take the monkey's paw and try to fix the death of their son. And of course it doesn't work. And then, yeah, we kind of enter to the horror element of the story um, mm-hmm. because it, yeah, I mean, it, it, it transgresses a lot of different avenues. And of course, is it the son? Is it the son not, or not the son? We don't know for sure. I mean, guys, you really never know as you know, the, the, the dad goes down and, you know, Mr. White's opening up the door and, Oof, it's 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 very eerie. Mm-hmm. It's 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 like a zombie film. Like you're in a cabin in the storm, and the bad guys, the fear of the unknown, are outside. So, so what's the right fix? Two shortcuts show that it's wrong. Finally, the third wish is it doesn't restore the sun, but it's like let's let's look. Well, they don't say what the wish is in the story. Right. I guess that's up to the reader. Let me tell you what my interpretation is. I imagine that he said, let my son rest in peace. Let my son die. Uh, Something to restore the shortcuts back to the natural order of things. And, And my guess is that they tried to live much simpler lives after that, essentially. But it's it's what they learned was, in my opinion, is that you can't use shortcuts for things where there isn't one. And and I know we used lottery kind of as, as the examples there, which again is money to explain money. He, here's another example, just because I just bought a new pair of boots lately. <laughs> you got to break those <laughs> in and you read all these tips about like submerge them in water, or douse them in, in oil or, 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 um, which actually isn't too bad, but you got people that like run it over with a car 
And, and sometimes that works, but you got to realize there's a lot of times that you crack that leather or that you break the shoe in the result of this because you're trying to speed it up, right? If you just wore the shoe, suffered through some of the pain, suffered through some of the pain in life is the example. Sometimes you just need to stop trying to shortcut things and the process is what's going to teach you in life is, I guess, kind of the point that I'm getting to. Hmm. So would you say that that point is something that a lot of religions say that Oh, come hard on. work. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go sweat of the brow, aren't you? Okay. L- l- let me, let me put it back in your co- court though. Like it, what, <laughs> what was your thought of what the man wished for at the end? Yeah. I, I, I kind of had the same conclusion that he wished his son not yeah, to be at peace, I guess. Yeah. How you said it, uh, to not be alive or some way he unwished his wife's wish. Um, and that way he didn't have to be horrified. Like his, his son, he, he even asked the wife at some point in the story, he said, do you really want our son who's been dead over, uh, was it two weeks to come back to us? Like that, that's not our son anymore. He's gone. You have to accept that. And that's where I kind of like the, the, the father's accepting it and trying to help, you know, his wife with this acceptance of death. And I think that might be one of the ultimate lessons of the story too, is there, there's no shortcut out of life. And was the son going to have a happy life or not? Uh, you know, it, it, what if he had lived? What would his life have been anyway? Who knows? So, well, yeah. Let me- let me let me ask you the hardest question possible. And I know there's not a universal answer for this. Like, I'll preface this. I know this is a loaded question. You're the disciple that's told to go out. You've learned the two wrongs, and then you use the last wish to make it right. You're one of the magical three. Your job is to educate others, but you can't, like, the pause done after three times. You, you can't use it, like... There's going to be disbelievers. There's people that don't believe you. They think you're just making up magic tricks. Mm -hmm. How do you convince people to be happy with what they got? I think that's where you, that's such a tough question. I don't, I don't want this to come off of like mean, but there is lessons in pain. I mean, there's light and there's dark. There's pain and there's happiness. I mean, there's love and there's hate. I mean, they're 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 all two co- sides of a coin. And I know that 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 is very you know cliche or corny sounding. But if you don't know one, you can't maybe necessarily know the depth of the other. Uh, so I think that having loss makes you appreciate something that you have. Mm. Well, and and they say like the sailors back in the day before we had more modernization you can't get to america without crossing through a storm right and and i guess more universal is you can't make an omelet without cracking an egg right sometimes you can't shortcut the process you have to go through the pain to get that experience and to learn and and i think that's that's hard for some people to accept like you always want the quick answer and and it's kind of hard to get that through to them and and maybe sometimes there are brilliant shortcuts but that doesn't mean there always is this is part of the problem yeah, maybe it is because you have to experience that. And once you've experienced it, then understanding comes. And that's what this family has gone through is an experience. And then understanding dawns upon them that there are the, the there are these things you have to live through to gain understanding and that those shortcuts aren't going to give them to you or they'll give you a negative version of it. I'm going to use that as my excuse for why it took us so long to get to this story. We had to reference this 800 (laughs) times in all our other videos before we actually covered it, before I could do it justice. (laughs) Better late than never. All right, guys, what do you wish for? Let us know in the comments down below. We're going to leave a playlist of other WW Jacob stories. We haven't covered any others yet, but let us know which ones you think we should cover. My name has been Una. If you appreciated the story, just leaving a comment is, is amazing to help us grow let the algorithm know that if you are this far in the video that you probably enjoyed it thank you so much my name's benuna i wish for you to smash that like button peace